Tesla batteries are meant to last well over 200,000 miles, despite some people on the internet telling you otherwise. But there are some things that you need to know to make sure that you get the most life out of your Tesla battery. And in this video, we're gonna talk about those things which include good charging habits, how to run battery health tests, what normal degradation looks like, and more. So let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the most important thing, practicing good charging habits. And the number one rule for most Teslas is to keep your battery at or under 80% full for your daily driving. And this basically means that if you're charging at home and every day you're going out to work or doing whatever you do, you don't really wanna charge your car over 80% unless you absolutely need the range. And your car will tell you this inside the screen, but of course, however, if you are going on a road trip or do need to maximize your range for whatever reason, it is okay to charge over 80% and even up to 100% in those situations. The biggest takeaway here is that you don't want your car sitting at or near 100% for hours or days at a time, because that is the one thing that out of everything we'll talk about in this video, that will degrade your battery the most over time. On the other hand, the same thing is true with a low battery. So you don't want your car sitting at or below 20% for hours or days at a time. But again, if you're going on a road trip and you'll get somewhere with a low state of charge and you're gonna plug in right away, that's totally okay. That will have a minimal to no effect on your battery's degradation. Now there is one exception to this, and that is Teslas that have LFP batteries in them. And to know if you have an LFP battery Tesla, basically they're older standard range Model 3s and Model Ys. If you hit the charger button, that battery icon, it will show you if it recommends you to charge to 80% or if it recommends you to charge to 100% for daily driving. And for most people, it will be 80%. But again, if you have an LFP batteried Tesla, it will recommend you to charge to 100%. And in that instance, it's totally okay to do so. Now let's talk about good charging practices, starting with at-home charging. Whether you're using a 110 or a 220 volt outlet or an upgraded wall connector charger, there is really no difference in battery degradation between these, so any at-home charging is totally fine for your Tesla. Now, supercharging is where it gets interesting because you would think that supercharging your car often would have a negative effect on the longevity of your battery, but recent studies have shown that this might not actually be the case. Now that a lot more Teslas have had more miles put on them, data is actually showing that supercharging your car a ton doesn't really have any impact on the longevity of your battery life. And before we go over a few more things, I wanna talk about how to run some battery health tests. So if you have a Tesla currently, you can get an accurate estimation to how much range you actually have at whatever mileage you're at right now. So if you wanna check the health of your battery and see if it's normal, there's three pretty common ways to check that. The first way, which is the easiest, but probably the most inaccurate, but still has some accuracy, is to have your car charged to 100% and tap the battery icon and see how many miles you would get at 100% state of charge. The second way is to use a third-party app. This app I have here is called the Teslab. Other apps do similar things where they take different sets of data based on charging and estimate a battery health based on their sets of data. And third, the most accurate, but the most time-consuming is to run a battery health test in service mode you would go into your Tesla screen, go into service mode, run a battery health test. This will take your battery all the way down to zero. It takes a while to complete this. It's not best to do often, but again, if you want the most accurate estimation of your battery health, this is the way to do it. Now next, let's go ahead and talk about degradation and pull up the chart that I showed earlier that shows the degradation curve of Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys. So yes, degradation is normal and it will happen. And if you do run a battery health test, this curve will give you a good estimation of where you should be at on average based on how many miles that you have. Now you'll see with normal degradation, yes, the battery does degrade over time and the most degradation happens within the first 50,000 miles or so. But there's no need to worry because based on this graph here, you can see that after about 50,000 miles, the degradation rate does flatten out quite a bit. Yes, it still does degrade over time, but not nearly at the rate that it does in the first 25 or first 50,000 miles. And for even more peace of mind, Tesla does offer a battery warranty for both new and used vehicles. And that warranty is eight years or 120,000 miles, whichever comes first. If your battery degrades by more than 70% of what it was when it was new, 
Tesla will replace it for free. So in other words, what that basically means is if you lost more than 30% of your range by eight years or 120,000 miles, you'll get a free battery replacement. So when your friends tell you you'll need a battery replacement with Tesla's every 30,000 miles, and those things cost like $15,000, you can show them this graph here and just say, hey, that's not the case. And second of all, if you did have a defective battery, which that would be, the replacement would be $0. Now I do want to touch on extreme temperatures as well because extreme heat and extreme cold do affect the battery in different ways. And although it is a very cold and windy day here in Las Vegas, it gets very hot here. But first, let's talk about cold weather because extremely cold weather will have an impact on your battery life, but it's only very temporary. So if it's really cold and your car is not warmed up yet, you'll see a little bit of a blue bar next to all that green on your charge on your battery. And what that signifies, that little blue bar, it's range that you have, but just not currently because your car needs to warm up a little bit before it can use that extra range. And just a few miles of driving will be enough to warm the car up enough to be able to use this little blue bar and it'll go away and you'll have all that range back. However, when it comes to long-term battery health, spending a lot of time in very cold climates has little to no impact on the life of your battery. Now, unfortunately for us Vegas people, being in extreme heat for long periods of time is a little bit of a different story. So unfortunately, prolonged exposure to extreme temperatures of over 95 degrees can accelerate battery degradation over time. Now, if you're like me and live in a place like Las Vegas, during the summers, this is just unavoidable. It's gonna happen, but luckily for us, the impact isn't very significant. A good way to help mitigate this effect is if you have at-home charging or park in the shade or you can charge in a garage, you don't have to run the air conditioning completely to your garage, but if you can run just enough to keep it at or below 95 degrees Fahrenheit, that should minimize the effect greatly over time. Now again, luckily the impact of extreme heat isn't very significant, but at the end of the day, if you were to take my Tesla with my miles and everything I've done to it, and compare it to someone else's whose only different thing was being in a colder climate, yes, my battery would have less miles compared to that other person's. Now next, I wanna talk about software because this is very cool, but make sure you keep your Tesla software updated because Tesla does send improvements and updates over time that yes, will increase the efficiency of your battery and in some cases in the past have given you more range based on that. Now, I don't know how they do it. I'm not a software engineer. I just know that it happens. So keep your software up to date. And if you don't know, your Tesla will tell you via the app or a phone notification. Every time there's a software update available, all you have to do is put your car in park and connect to Wi-Fi anywhere and hit download for the update. So there you have it. If you follow these tips and these practices, you should be able to get the most life out of your Tesla battery. And worst case, if you do have a defective battery, the warranty is good for eight years or 120,000 miles on used or new Teslas. If you have any questions, please comment down below. If you're a current Tesla owner and you think I missed something, please let me know also in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.